This is how we ride. This is how we do. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. And just a few things that I have started to notice in the dirt late model world. And I wanted some answers. And I went around to some people and asked, what in the hell is going on? And looky right here. Now, that, that ten of Garrett Smith just went in there, jumped the cush, jumped on the throttle to get out of the cush. So that car, if anyone knows about inertia, that car is yawed the hell over. That's as high as that 10 car is going to go. Meanwhile, we see this 76 car, Brandon Overton. This is a situation where in the Drupa era, that just don't look right to me. What in the hell is that all about? You see right here, Garrett Smith, right here, this little point right here on the body, it's in the middle of the of the of the rim right here, whereas Overton's is at the top of the rim, and you also see the gap here is just almost double the size of the gap between the top of the tire and the, the bottom of the body. And of course, spoiler height is what everyone's worried about here. And I did hear some things how the body could be acting differently or something like that or built differently to where the spoiler is not necessarily getting too high and it's passing the droop. But it ain't passing the damn eye test. Droopa, please. So we push play on this and you'll see even other drivers, you, you see it, it just stands up. Look at it, all the way down the back. And you look at McCready, and you're like, okay, here's another top performing driver. And his left rear is about the same damn height as Garrett Smith's was. Look at that. But that looks okay. This, this, somebody else, please tell me. Please, somebody. This is, this is not the same. What is going on here? What is happening? I like Brandon Overton. Can somebody tell me what's going on? Can somebody tell me, please? Somebody sent me this little tricky device of what could be happening and what could be going on. A little trick trick part. This could be happening. Not sure. But I'll tell you what. This just don't look right to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I know we need Brandon Overton's way more than we need Kyle Larson's. When I say that, we need dirt track superstars. And I consider Brandon Overton a dirt track superstar. Hell, I would love Brandon Overton to get on here and call me a fucking dumbass and say this or that or the other. And say, here's what the hell's actually happening. Because to me, that just don't look right. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. In the post Drupa era, when people say, oh, it's fine. Oh, that's okay. Drupa, please. That don't look okay to me. And these Drupas out here running wild. Somebody stop me. But I don't want to be stopped. But I'll tell you what. There was another instance with some things. And we talked about it yesterday. The scoring and time, timing situation. Where, uh... You know, the timing said it was the B5. Official said it was the 16 car. Now, the eye test for me says it's the 16 car. So, we're fine here. I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with what Lucas Oil did here and giving the, the 16 car the advantage. Now, the situation with uh, Bruning and Shepard, I, I had some follow-up. And I can't show you who's, who's telling me this. I'll just tell you he's very involved in the development of racing parts and tools and and uh, just overall innovation of the game with the dirt late model scene. These late model boys don't get enough credit for how smart the crew chiefs are. They are the best cheaters in the game. And, and a lot of people say we're the early days of NASCAR. In the early days of NASCAR, there was all kinds of cheating. I got, I got uh, uh, tech officials telling me how... They got traction control actually welded on and into the chassis. It's in a bar of the chassis. And that's where the traction control is located. It runs through the tubing of the chassis into the spots that it needs to go. That's what I am being told by officials within the sport. This guy also switches over to the Bruning Shepherd incident. And this is where it gets very interesting. On what happened with the timing and scoring versus the visuals. We were at unnamed track for a unnamed series race. And me, an unnamed driver, had a photo finish transfer spot out of the B main and I knew I had him beat to the line. But they gave it to unnamed driver. I told the tech official to go check his transponder location. I had my transponder on the right rear where unnamed series officials wanted, to, wanted it mounted. But of course, unnamed driver had his on the left front. 
There is so much shady shit going on with transponders. These mofos cheat so bad with transponders when it comes to qualifying. Okay, so he sent me a photo then, not going to show that, of a very high profile driver. It's out of a video, and in the background you could see a line of transponders. It looks like six. Why would someone need multiple transponders unless you're cheating during qualifying? These transponders, when fully charged, are good for seven days. If you zoom in, you can see unnamed driver had multiple transponders. What they do is during qualifying, they put a transponder on the front and one on the rear of the car. Coming to the line, they will trip the line or start the time with the transponder on the rear. Coming to take the checkered, it will trip the front of the transponder. Now you would have gained a full car length, which is huge. Nine times out of ten, Qualifying is the name of the game in dirt late model racing. Once again, not showing you who that's from, but there are multiple questions and multiple people wanting to know what the hell's going on. To me, the visuals of, of this Overton situation are just, I, I'm, I'm looking at it, guys. Everyone sees what I'm looking at. And even though it's paused right here next to Garrett, Al or Garrett Smith, it doesn't matter. Look at it stay up. Look at that. Something's going on. But if anyone out there knows, please tell me. Please tell me. Call me a dumbass. Call me an idiot. You're just looking at your fishing, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. The eye test is, is not being passed right now. And as far as this transponder situation is going as well, what the hell's happening here? You're telling me they got, got they got transponders on the front end, the back three tran all up in there? What in the hell is going on, people? And if they got traction control that runs through the tube of the car, what other switches do they got? They got a switch that turns on the front transponder and then turns it off so the back one trips or... What's going on here, ladies and gentlemen? What is going on in the dirt late model world? I'll tell you what. I'm not necessarily hating on it because I think it's cool. Y'all guys just cheat y'all's ass off until they catch you. I mean, that's my honest feelings. I mean, I, I'm seeing some stuff. I don't know how to explain it. I'm asking questions. I'm trying to figure it out. But at the end of the day, y'all just keep on cheating. Y'all whoop that tech guy's ass up and down the racetrack. This is what's good. This is what's grand. This is what causes innovation. And we are one of the luckiest sports in the world, in motorsports at least, to still have innovation involved. You can't do it in, in, in NASCAR, in HRA, Formula One, all these other big time sports that are on a big time level. You can't do that. You know, you can't do what they are doing, whatever that may be. So it is worth appreciating. It is cool. It's something to pay attention to. That's why I'm making a video about it. The innovation, the crew chiefs, the minds, the games that are being played are very high in today's dirt racing world. This is how we ride, this is how we do, ride mud, sliding up.